hey guys, hey, hey, please, 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 me. I'm an honorable member of the itty bitty titty committee. In fact, I'm waiting for my induction now. Where's my certificate? Where's my badge? And where are my fellow members to induct me? You know, I'm done with the big titty committee. No, 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 no. We are here for the itty bitty titty committee. back to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution so today's video I'm going to be talking about my breast reduction experience so for those of you who don't know I actually had a breast reduction my surgery was on the 3rd of June 2021 and in this video I'm pretty much going to be giving you guys the facts the details um, I'm going to do another video where I talk more uh, from an emotional perspective things like um, you know body image and how do I like my body now and you know just just how it affected me emotionally my regrets what I wish I knew blah 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 I would do it in this video but then it's gonna be too long so in this video I'm really just gonna walk you guys through the process um, why I did it how I did it and um, post operation care where I am now etc etc and I'll show you a picture of the before and after let me start off with the reason reasons why I decided to have a breast reduction. So I am not a fan of surgery, I'm not a fan of doctors, I'm not a fan of medicine and I try to avoid it as much as possible. Well, I mean like even when I'm on my period I try to take pills. Well now I've changed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the pain is too much now. <laughs> but before I would like basically not take pain uh, killers until I'm like yo okay no this is bad. Um, just because I try to control how much pills come into my body and stuff like that. And so I say all this to say that the decision to have a breast reduction is not one that I made lightly because I had this um, attitude towards surgery of like unless I'm dying and I need to have surgery to live then I don't want to have surgery um, simply because you know just people messing up with my body putting their fingers inside me what if they're wearing ring drops in there or whatever okay 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 fine that's an irrational opinion um, the reason why I had surgery is because my boobs were starting to cause severe severe back pain to the point where I could not stand for extended periods of time or walk for too long and walking I don't just mean uphill I mean literally walking on a straight road I would start to feel pain on my lower back to the point where I felt like okay I just need to sit down because I can't do this um, and I also realized that I, I started walking slower so I always walk slow and I always thought it was just because like I don't know it's just how I am and I would always tell my friends like slow down walking fast is gonna make you age but then when I stopped to think about it I actually realized that me walking slow was a subconscious reaction to my back pain to the point where I never even stopped to think about why do I walk so slow so the biggest reason was the back pain and something else is you know it was so hard to find bras when your boobs are that big I remember when I was like in freaking matric or something grade 12 when I was uh, 18 the lady was like you for boobs your size you need to get those susp suspender bras and she pointed me to like these granny looking bras bro like nothing attractive nothing nice and I was like no like I'm too young to be walking around wearing those but those were the only ones that I could get my size that could fit me properly but I never got them please I had to keep it sexy for the babies I'm I'm the babies it's, it's me but you know for my own self image um, but yeah finding a bra was so difficult both um, in person and online I found more luck finding bras online but the catalog was so limited um, it was to the point where I had to go look for bras at like a plus size store but then like and it sucks because the range that they offered at the store that I went to there was nothing it was just like black and nude and that was it you know nothing sexy nothing nice nothing like inspiring nothing juicy nothing like to make me feel like I'm a young painting you know what I'm saying so um 
yeah finding bras was definitely a big struggle and it was quite a frustrating one as well um another thing is again with the whole bra thing i don't know if like this is because of my boobs but like bras would just get damaged easily um the bigger my boobs got they would just get damaged easily and and they wouldn't provide me with the support i needed even sports bras working out became a challenge because sports bras unless i wear four five sports okay i'm being dramatic but unless i wear about two three sports bras i don't get the support that i need so when i work out they literally jump up and down and it's painful so working out became difficult um but yeah those are some of the reasons why i got a breast reduction so i moved from a 38g to a 38d so this is the new size now in comparison to what it used to look like before i hope you guys can see front side and now going into how i went about it so my mom is actually the one that found the doctor i'm not going to say the doctor's name on this video for like i don't know like i just don't feel the need to i don't think it's a good idea but if you're interested in knowing the doctor then definitely send me a message on instagram and i will definitely tell you the name of the doctor so my mom found a doctor and she's located here in south africa i had my surgery here in south africa i went for my first appointment with her on the 14th of may i came back on the 10th of May from America my appointment was the 14th of May and when I went to go see her we pretty much talked about um, why I'm getting a reduction and I told her about the back pain and she was saying that no one can ever assure you that your back pain will be gone like hopefully the surgery will relieve that pain if that's the cause but no one can promise you that um, having your boobs reduced will relieve your back pain because back pain can be caused by a number of things and it might be deeper than just you know cutting off your boobs so um, she spoke about that finding out my reasons and she asked me what size I wanted to go down to so I'm the one who chose to go down to a D and I felt like a D was, you know, like, you know, oh, this is cute, you know, it's still big enough, but it's not too small, but it's not too big, it's just right, and I felt like it just aligns with my brand, you know what I'm saying, like, you look at me and you think D, you know, the D for Danielle is also for, you know, breast cup size, you know what I mean, um, but yeah so i picked out my size and she didn't have a problem with it um but one thing doctors do do is when you pick a size they will advise you and say okay i think that's too small or i think that's too big um and they make this decision they also look at you and they're like if we make them too small the rest of your body is going to look awkward because you still need to be in like a fair amount of proportion if it's too small your your, your uh, belly is going to poke out and look like really big and stuff like that so they want to avoid anything that looks awkward on you yeah um in that appointment she also also ran through what the surgery would be like and then she took uh, before pictures of my boobs so like you know the boobs I had when I was coming into the office it was not a very long appointment um, but it was quite detailed and now to go into the cost breakdown so I need to look at my notes for this so the actual surgery itself was 25,000 Rand and then you pay 27,000 for the hospital stay and then it was 8,000 for the anesthetic or the or not the anesthetic but the anesthesiologist that comes down to a total of 60,000 rand which is what i paid for the surgery now um you can actually get your medical aid to cover it however medical aid tends to be a little bit like on the iffy side so they look at your bmi and i believe the standard is 30 and if your bmi is over 30 it's unlikely that they'll cover it they will actually tell you to rather go lose weight the medical aid wants you to prove that you are getting your surgery for medical reasons so you'll have to get your doctor to say okay it's for medical reasons and you'll have to get more justification i didn't go down that route so i can't go into detail about how exactly it goes um but my doctor's office they did submit some forms to the medical aid and they did it for me they literally typed up whatever letter they need to type up explaining everything and the medical aid got back and they covered it so with my treatment it was definitely like basically half self-pay and um half medical aid covering it so as i said my appointment was may 14th and i had the surgery on the 3rd of june so in preparation for the surgery i think for about two weeks i had to stop taking any medication that had any kind of blood thinners 
had to stop taking that. I had to get a COVID test, um, obviously, so that they know I don't have COVID um, when they do the surgery. I also had to stop eating on the 2nd of June midnight. So that midnight that was taking me into the 3rd, I had to stop eating by then. Oh, and they also asked me to isolate after taking my COVID test, obviously, so that I know for sure that I don't go forward and contract COVID. Now going into the day of the surgery. Thank you, Father. We glorify your name. We pray for mercy. We ask for mercy upon our lives, Almighty God. I cover all of us by the blood of Jesus. And Hey guys, so today's the day of the surgery. I hope you can hear me. Hold on, here we go. So today's the day of the surgery, and how am I feeling? First of all, I look great. I look really nice. Um, how am I feeling? I don't feel anything right now. So I've just gone to the hospital. I filled out the forms, and I'm waiting for them to um, come get me so I can, you know, I don't know, do pre-op stuff, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm just. I don't feel anything yet. Like, I feel like it's not real yet. I think once they come get me and I go through those doors, then it's gonna be like, oh snap, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really doing this thing. Um, so for now, um, I'm calm. You know, on the way here, I was playing a lot of gospel music and not the cute one, not Hillsong, not Elevation Worship. I was playing the Stump the Yard Gospel. That one that's really like just going to scare the demons away. Um, but yeah, you know, this is something we've been praying about and I, I prayed a lot. I was fasting last week. I prayed a lot and I was like, God, if this is not meant to happen, like, give me a sign that I cannot even refute, you know? And instead I got like a positive sign that was like for it, so. So I got there in the morning and we had to fill out some forms. The form that you write literally says you could lose sensation in your boobs. Like you could literally never feel your boobs again. There could be complications of the surgery. They basically write down all the worst case scenarios scenario things I don't remember everything that it said but in the next video the emotional one I will uh, try put it into that one hopefully um, but yeah so they write down all the worst case scenario things and then you just sign like yep I may die but like I'm a major adrenaline junkie and I stay signing forms of like I could die doing this ah so I had to fill in some forms and then they took my blood pressure and they made me take off any metal earrings, etc, etc. I don't wear any earrings, so I didn't have anything, but I had these metal like beads in my hair. So I had to take that out. And then they ask you literally 10 times, like all the people that come and see you. And I think I was seen by a total of like six people. All the people that come and see you ask you as many times as they can. When was the last time you ate? I think they asked me over 10 times. When was the last time I ate? Um, and they literally make you write it down in the form, but they also write it down when you see them. I guess it's to make sure that you definitely did not eat past the time you were not meant to eat. And I believe the reason for that is because when they're doing surgery, if you've eaten, you could basically like choke or something and then, you know, like die. So they're definitely careful about that one. Eventually, they moved me to the room. My mom had to stay in the reception area and I think she left at some point. Yeah, but she left at some point and then they took me through to the back. They put me in the gowns and stuff. Yeah, I was looking cute because it was just my color. Um, and I did my hair specifically for surgery so I could have like good hair for recovery. But anyway, so they took me forward. They asked me again, when was the last time I ate? And then you stay there for a while. The doctor comes and then she did the whole writing on my boobs thing as if I'm on like Dr. 90210 getting my breast argumentation, you know what I'm saying? Someone else came, was a nurse, and she put on these stockings. Um, and these are compression socks I think and basically just to prevent clotting during the surgery then after that they rolled me into the room then they put the anesthetic on and I think I zoned out in like literally like less than a minute I think and I was gone 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 so the surgery took something like three hours it was three hours long um and i didn't feel a thing i didn't wake up halfway when after the surgery when i did wake up and this is the most pain i felt in the whole period of my breast reduction when i woke up i was in the worst pain of my entire life like on my chest it was, oh, even talking about it now is making me like, oh. But like, um, 
it, I, I, I guess I woke up and the anesthesia had run out and but anyway I felt everything and I could barely talk I was still hazy you know because you just fresh out of surgery so when I wake up the doctor comes to see me and she's like how are you doing and I'm like I'm in pain and someone else asked me how am I doing I was like I'm in pain and so they were trying to administer the medication to me and I feel like they were taking long not too long but long enough for me to be like damn y'all inject me damn so that was the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. But then they gave me meds and then they took me um, to the room where I slept. And then um, eventually they came to get me. So the room where I slept is not where I spent the night, you know, because obviously it's COVID, hospitals are going through their own things. So um, they took me from there to another hospital area or whatever, like it was a slash old age home vibes. I don't know what to say I don't know how to explain but they took me over to that side and I actually only spent one night at the hospital now talking a bit about my hospital stay as I said I only spent one night there man the nurses were nice all of them were so nice but the problem is uh, the anesthesia guys according to my nurses y'all according to my nurses the anesthesia guys did not put the the drip in properly it was kind of bent so now when I was in the hospital where they were still giving me like pain meds and stuff like that um the drip would not stay in properly it would not transfer meds to me properly which would mean that i'm feeling like a level of pain because the meds not coming in and what i don't understand is instead of them just and maybe if you guys are in the medical field or you know better you can explain the comments but they didn't change the drip instead they opted to just keep coming into my room every other hour and I think almost every hour and like just adjusting it, putting tape, turning it or whatever. Um, and that did interrupt me from really getting like a full peaceful night's sleep. Number one, pain. Number two, again, like they just keep waking me up. Um, but yeah, when I was in that room, my mom came to see me I think after the surgery she brought me food she brought me a charger and there was no actually there was no plug near me so thank god I brought my power bank because that's what I was using to charge because there was no proper plug near me so um when my power bank runs out of battery I would give it to the nurses to charge for me then bring it back yeah so um my mom brought me food but the hospital food actually I'm not gonna lie it wasn't bad like it was nice I had this other bamboo and yogurt it was, it was quite nice so the next day when it was time to bath um I didn't actually get up to bath what they do is they bring a bucket and then they just pretty much wipe my arms wipe me here and stuff like pretty minimal stuff your boobs are not allowed to get wet and then the next day the lady came back again to show me how I need to empty out my little blood sack thing I had the a blood sack attached to me so the two cords are here on my sides and they come across down here they're collecting blood from my body after my surgery and it's in a, like a little circle thing and then yeah I left and that was that. My mom had to drive super slowly because I couldn't put a seatbelt on, it was too sore. And yo guys, let me tell you guys, ne? bumps, humps in the road, yo, I wanted to die. It was so painful. And now I'm about to go into my post-op cape. Last night at like four in the morning, I was in a lot of pain. Hey guys, I sat there and I thought about my life. I was like, is this really me? Like, I'm so pain intolerant in my life. I've never broken anything, never needed crutches, or uh, nothing. Because I'm pain intolerant and I avoid pain. So I sat here and I was like, did I really put myself in a position to be in pain for the vibes? Um, but obviously it's not for the vibes. I really hope that this increases my uh, quality of life. Right now I'm about to have some breakfast. Um, and then after breakfast, I'm going to take my meds. My meds were supposed to make me drowsy, but they don't, which is very annoying because I would appreciate being drowsy. Um, another thing is my meds are quite heavy. When I drink them, they get stuck in my chest, if that makes sense. Like, like I, I feel like they're stuck here. And so my mom actually told me that I must eat a slice of bread dry after the pills and the bread will help push the pills down. I kid you not, it actually worked. Like after I had the slice of bread, like it literally took the pills down. So for anyone who didn't know that. So yeah, I said the pain's a seven. Like my chest just feel, my chest just feels super tight and sore. And um, I'm just really tired. Can't stand for too long. So as I said, there's a blood sac connected to you that collects the blood that is still coming out of you after the surgery. And you have to empty that sac out twice a day. 
the process of emptying out the blood is so the sack right i have to like shake it like this and i empty it out into a cup and then when i'm done when i get the blood out of the sack then they give me a little syringe and i have to literally um scoop out or pull out suck out all of my blood so i could see how much blood was there write it down and then after that then i drain the blood and wash the cup and wash the thingy it was a very disgusting point of my life i really i think about it every day i can't i'm a survivor guys i'm not gonna give up you know keep on surviving you have to write how much blood is coming out of you every day so it's supposed to be less and less and less and less blood coming out each time and i had to do this for five days twice a day and i had to write down what it is so if my blood was not decreasing over the time then they would have had to keep it in longer and it might indicate a problem but mine was decreasing so after five days i was able to take it out this was a very difficult disgusting experience i'm not gonna lie like yo you know this breast reduction told me that i think i'm squeamish guys like mm, mm, oh, it was my blood but oh. moving on with post-op your boobs were not allowed to get wet for i think the first week or two as in when you bath um you need to like go around but they cannot get wet at all all. and then after that you're actually allowed to get them wet you're allowed to like wash over the bandage so they leave a bandage on you that you are able to wash over now going into the worst part of my whole entire surgery experience besides the little pain thing is i had to wear these stupid stockings the stockings that i wore when i was getting surgery the compression ones oh my days i had to wear them for four weeks day and night for four weeks except when i'm washing them and they're hand washed but they're so, oh i hated them guys because they're so tight and they just like you know like it's like tying a rope around your arm and leaving it there obviously it's gonna leave a mark it's gonna hurt at some point and stuff it's like oh it was the worst oh i'm just getting mad thinking about it apart from that after the surgery they give you this special bra that you have to put on and you have to keep this bra on for six weeks post up i still have the bra on right now it's like this like support bra it doesn't like flatter even now like it doesn't flatter it doesn't lift it doesn't like add spice sugar spice and everything nice it's it's it, it just it just supports you they give you the first one free and then you are allowed to buy more so you can interchange this one is also hand wash but you have to keep it on pretty much day and night and now this is something that i feel they never told me before the surgery and i it's really annoying it's not a big deal but it's really annoying um and that's because I, I'm, not, I'm not a person for like a nightly routine where i have to do something every single night it's just oh i hate that kind of stuff it's why i suck at wearing my retainer too because i just hate you know anyway but um so the the support bandages are off now now it's like two weeks post op and now they leave on this little tape that literally goes around the scars this is um to number one make sure that the scars don't open and then number two that's how you treat your scars so you also get this scar gel they give you tape they give you scar gel i think the first one is free the second one you buy and basically you put the scar gel cream on top of the tape on top of the tape and that basically deals with your scarring another thing about scarring it depends from person to person some people have aggressive scars other people scar really well according to my doctor and my homegirls and my mom i'm apparently scarring really well so with these tapes you have to keep them on three months post up and you do this routine for three months post up you change this tape yourself every single friday so you remove it you clean the area you let it dry then you put the tape back on you put on your cream and then you keep it on for a week and change it again and this happens for three months so i'm only going to stop doing this at around september i actually put it on my calendar now going into your post-op appointments so i had four post-op appointments the first one was five days post-op the other one was three days after that so on day eight and then after that i had two more on um different fridays and on these appointments that basically the doc the nurse actually not even the doctor the nurse just um takes off your tape cleans it checks if you're fine takes a picture puts it back on and you're good to go the first one five days post-op that's when she took off my um 
my blood sack things and then she explained the whole scar so for the last part of this video i'm going to be talking about your post-op support you are going to need oh let me see i did i needed a lot of support after the surgery especially for the first two weeks so for the first two weeks you are advised to take it easy stay home rest don't do too much don't walk too much don't heavy lift too much just give your body time to recover and it's hard to move it's hard to lift your arms and I think for the first five days I couldn't get up by myself well I needed people to help me get up I was walking really slow really slow like uh, 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 uh. it was hard for me to wash myself because my arms could not extend so well remember the the thing is what I had holes in me here taking out blood so it was hard for me to move so you definitely need someone who's gonna be there to support you get you food um, things that you need what I did and it helped a lot is I moved my plugs to be very close to me I got extensions and everything so the things I needed could literally be right by my side uh, thankfully for me I have a bed that moves up and down so I was able to go from laying down to sitting up without having to go through too much effort of standing up standing up was very difficult um, and then I needed someone to help me when I was taking out my blood because you have to fold it in this certain type of way and pour it out and it was the whole thing so I, I did have someone help me with that you can't drive for the first two weeks and you have an appointment after five days so you'll need someone who will drive you to the appointment or drive you anywhere you want to go again it's really painful so you're not even able to put on a seat belt so you definitely need someone who's going to be there to give you some care and attention obviously recovery differs from person to person but one thing's for sure you will need people who are there to help you you can you do it on your own nah nah you need people and let me end of this video with one of my favorite quotes which is i am because we are the spirit of ubuntu in this life we need people to get by thank you so much to everyone who has supported me post up pre up during up all the ups thank you so much and yeah guys i think i pretty much covered everything in this video i don't think i left out anything if you have any other comments um comment down below or message me on instagram and yeah i will make another video with the emotional side but until then that's it for today guys i hope you like this video don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and i will be back with more videos peace and love guys